the computer. The a candidate who comes from a dynasty has 80% chances, higher chances of winning compared to a candidate na hindi tayo sa dynasty. Ibig sabihin, uh, this, you know, this only affirms the fact that once a political dynasty, a, polit a political dynasty forever, of course, may mga exceptional cases may mga namamatay. Pero yung mga namamatay, bumabalik eh. Like the Marcoses, nakabalik sila ulit. So, ibig sabihin, pagka pinag-usapan ng political dynasty, it's already not just simply mentioning family names or mentioning individual politicians, but we are now looking at a whole structure of political dynasty that perpetuates itself by virtue of the, uh, you know, yung kanilang, you know, the fact na nandiyan na sila sa posisyon na yan, so, kakapita na yan, tapos nanganak pa sila ng marami pang mga miyembro. So that's what uh, this particular slide is talking about. So I'll just move forward. Uh, for instance, ito is some statistics from 1907 to 2004, mula doon sa first assembly to the present Congress of two houses, the House of the Australian Senate. Ito ay naging practically o literally bahay na ng 160 families for more almost 100 years. It's 160 families. Mga lolo, mga anak, and mga relatives. Continuously serving each with two or more than two members accounting for 434 of 2,407 men and women to let the children feel. Postwar House of Representatives, 1946 Congress, from 98 congressmen elected, 61 came from families with elected positions from 1947 to 1941. The economic roots of political dynasties. Kung pagkakaraan natin yung mga dominant members ng Congress through the decades, yung unang kongreso after World War II, yun ang kongreso ng mga landlords. Yung kongreso ng mga landlords. Habang nagde-develop yung economy ng bansa from land-owning economic power to mining, logging, etc. And then, ito ng 70s, 80s, or 80s rather, to the present in media, media monopoly, media ownership, real estate, etc. Uh, all of these uh, statistics talk about how the political dynasties evolve from the fact that they are the dominant non-owned class, and then they are also, they also become the dominant mining, mining operators, concessioners, etc. Lovers, Aurora, Aurora, uh, who is it? Yes, Aurora is the most limited province in the Philippines. And it's one of the least developed provinces of the Philippines. But it is very rich in terms of the dominance by one single dynasty. I'm talking about the Akaras. Pag pumunta kayo sa Aurora, napaka hindi, napaka depressed. Uh, one of the least developed provinces. But in terms of political values, it's one of the features in terms of political values. Ayun yung equation natin nyo ba? Uh, itong mga huling yung mga pagkaaral. We were able to identify na where the political dynasties are most entrenched, there you will find the provinces that are the most indebted, most depressed. I'm not saying that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between economic development and political dynasty, but let's hear it from the Let's hear it from the, uh, the, uh, the researchers. Halimbawa, ang sinasabi ng 
Arsenio Pansaka, kung hindi nila sekretary, marami sekretary. Sabi niya sa isang uh, thesis niya, bago pa siya ng contact, marami sekretary or mega, director, political dynasty is fair growth and poverty reduction. Sabi naman ni Winnie Monson, sa isang study niya sa para sa UN Development Program, Provinces as one of political dynasties lack on growth and development. Maginda now is the uh, least developed or, or rather the poorest province in the Philippines, but reaches in terms of political dynasty history. Asabi ka ng AIM, Asian Institute of Management, uh, two years ago, political dynasty of Philippines are found in regions with higher poverty levels. Sabi din namin, poverty and social inequality are worse in provinces with deeply entrenched political dynasties. People where the Vina Fuentes reign supreme. In the Escudero, is the fourth poorest region. in the Philippines. Aaron is the number one tourist. <laughs> uh, so, pagdating sa mga election, talagang hindi na mababago. I hope mababago pa siya. Pero hindi na mababago yung, 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 ano, yung inequality sa election. No? Ay, uh, ang definition natin sa election, kung talagang demokratiko yan, it should be clear. It should, it should show a fair competition to show a fair competition, not of fresh life, it's not of political diagnosis. Culture of powerlessness of the people, again, of course, is a uh, factor between the world of the center. Patakaw ng mga parts, the private uh, groups. At the Marami, ngayon, according to the reports, kung parang mga ngayon, at the Marami, private uh, groups, My conclusion, um, political dynasties are uh, some systemic or some institutional problem with deep social and economic ways. So my, my uh, theory that I also share with other studies is that hindi simple as a political na political power. It is ito simple ang usapin ng political equation. Ito ay usapin din ng economic equation. Where those who have most in life are using the political dynasties. Hindi pa rin. Economic power means political power. So, ang kung gusto natin i-address yung political dynasties, we should as well address the economic inequities, economic inequalities. Uh, that prevail in our country today. Do we have a democracy today? No. We only have few that want to or that or the democracy at, at best, the democracy. Elections are manipulated to legitimize and perpetuate dynasties. So the main question is, do we have a good dynasty? If you really are a good dynasty, then you must follow the constitution. Marami po salamat and I hope I was able to enlighten you. Uh, in this fall. Thank you.